Hi, I'm Galina Vileva and today I'm interviewing Katerina Ramirez. Katerina is an immigrant from uh, Russia in Canada and uh, she's the founder and owner of the company Energy Match. They help entrepreneurs uh, develop a strong mindset. Hi, Katya. Katerina, yeah, <laughs> nice to have you. Hi, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you for inviting me. Yeah, you're welcome. So, it's such an honor to have you. I read that your uh, focus is to help entrepreneurs develop a stronger mindset for their businesses. And what does it mean exactly? So, um, let's start uh, with the mindset. So, mindset is first and uh, foremost is uh, how people um, think. So, talking about entrepreneurs, it's how they think about themselves and their potential. Uh, what's really going on in their minds and what's going on in their own uh, subconscious level. Because um, our thinking is there is conscious thinking and subconscious. And conscious is what uh, we're usually aware of and what uh, we know about ourselves. And subconscious is what we are usually not aware of. It's the programming that we have since childhood. And um, things that uh, determine uh, what kind of experiences that we have in life and in businesses and how we tend to behave. Because um, uh, every person has a uh, certain kind of understanding of who they are and what our life is about and that's usually formed in childhood and later on they uh, behave and they um, uh, look at life based on what were there, uh, what was formed uh, in their childhood and uh, they tend to behave this way. So uh, what I do is uh, I help first to uncover what it is and then help them to set their programming, uh, how they think on the way that would actually help them in their business. So it's seeing your value, seeing your potential, recognizing what you're able to do and helping them to actually do it and go for bigger projects, uh, pursue bigger goals and to do it with more ease and with more joy. And what made you start this company? started it was uh, it's actually uh, like a big story of how I started and maybe I could tell my whole story of uh, immigrating to Canada because I would love uh, that. yes so I first came to Canada um, around seven years ago and I came here as an exchange student um, to study in Canada for one semester and experience uh, other countries uh, I got an opportunity to come to Canada. It was um, a big surprise to me. I uh, said uh, yes to this opportunity right away. And I uh, came uh, here, um, I can't remember uh, the year, but it was in September and spent four months uh, in Canada. Uh, it was a really good experience. I, uh, I liked the freedom of being a student in another country. And here I met my husband. And um, we fell in love and I had to come back to Russia again uh, to graduate uh, from my university because that was important for me. And then we decided to get married and I came to Canada after graduating from university and it was uh, six years ago. And since that time, I'm living in Canada with him here. So... Um, in Russia, after I graduated, everything was good in terms of my career. I had a good uh, job offer, but I had to say no to that uh, job because I was uh, uh, already knew that uh, I was going to Canada uh, to move here. So I came here, and um, the, my experience uh, was very different in terms of career. I felt like a total zero in terms of uh, language. Like, I could speak uh, English, but it was still uh, not good enough. Um, I had a huge accent. 
I could not always express myself clearly and not always I could understand uh, uh, what people were talking about. And another thing is that uh, in terms of career is that uh, in Canada, it's very important to have Canadian experience and people value Canadian education more than um, education from other countries. And at that time, uh, it was uh, pretty hard, emotional, uh, to go through that process. And um, right away, I began volunteering in order to build this uh, Canadian experience uh, and, um, and get uh, a letters of reference, because it's important in Canada to have uh, letters of reference when you apply for a job. So I uh, began volunteering right away, and uh, I got um, uh, two letters uh, uh, reference. And within two months, when I started looking for a job, I was able to find actually a job. It was. Um, that's pretty good, right? Just two months. Just that's two pretty months. good. Yeah, I didn't realize at that time that was pretty good. But later on, when I got to know uh, how bloody and messy some people's experiences are uh, in finding a good job, uh, that was pretty good. It was an office job and um, it was it was kind of, a good, it's fine, it was a fine job, but it still didn't match uh, my skill set and what I uh, had to offer. And uh, in that company, I was trying to do so much and I was asking just give me something to do different because I, I want to do things. I want to, um, to work. But uh, they, didn't, um, they didn't have much to offer because uh, uh, in order for me to offer something else, they would have to offer me a new position. Yeah. So right. I, I stayed with that company for around a year and a half, I think. Mm -hmm. And okay. I, um, I received uh, more responsibilities. I was able to supervise two other people, but it was still mm, the job itself didn't match my skill set. And uh, I just couldn't see the future in that company for myself. So what did you decide to do? I decided to quit it. It was a time when I couldn't even physically be present at that workplace because I was just sick of being locked and not able to do what I can do. And I was so sick of it that I just decided that I have to just to leave. I, I couldn't be there anymore. So how long did you stay at that job? It was for a year and a half mm -hmm. that uh, I stayed in that job. And during um, that time, I was looking for um, other jobs and uh, related uh, to my uh, education. And I was IT in business. And I had um, opportunities to go to interviews, but I just didn't get a job. Right. So that so, was six years, about six years ago, right? And how did the situation for immigrants change? Is it better? Uh, are there organizations that help you to um, transfer the credentials that you had at, um, from a university from back home? Uh, or is it still the same? Yeah, um, lots of there are lots of organizations in Canada, and uh, government itself uh, help. Uh, uh, they help uh, immigrants uh, to transfer uh, all their skills and credentials in order to use them um, here in Canada. And it's different for different kind of professions. Let's say uh, uh, for me, mm -hmm. IT, it didn't matter much because uh, it's. Uh, it's different kind of skill set. Uh, it's uh, more computer related, yeah. but for people like nurses, doctors, um, teachers, it's a different situations uh, situation because uh, they can't actually have a job in this field until they have uh, Canadian credentials. Mm -hmm. And there are specific programs uh, for this type of professions um, to go fa faster with this process. And, but they still have to pretty much start with, uh, with zero, even though they have um, all the experience and Canadian uh, credentials, they need to start like at the bottom. So uh, basically it's the um, entry job, right? What it's called. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
so, uh, okay, so when you arrived to Canada as an immigrant, um, were there some sort of organizations that were supporting uh, women like you? Um, I mean, does somebody call you and say, hi, you're a new immigrant, let me help you with something? <laughs> no, not like that. No one would actually call you unless you would know someone. And actually, um, for the first three years, I didn't, uh, I didn't um, look for this kind of programs because I didn't think that something like that existed. Right. And all the support I would I got from my husband in terms of let's say cover letters, uh, resumes, my language, uh, network, and he would help me. And your but, husband uh, is an immigrant as well, right? Yeah, but he's he's been in Canada for um, I don't know how many years, and he's kind of a Canadian already. Okay. Yeah. And um, but he totally so he's understands English. your experience as well. Yeah, his experience is a little bit different. But um, his English was uh, very good at the beginning, and um, he—it um, was—it's a very different experience, mm -hmm. uh, different from mine. Yeah, and uh, I find out about all the organizations and programs that's available for immigrants and specifically for women only um, after I quitted that job. Yeah. <laughs> and that was a good thing that I quit that job because um, while being at that job, I didn't look for anything. I just did everything on my own. And uh, after I quit that job, I decided that uh, I just couldn't rely on employers and companies uh, to give me the opportunities. I realized that I have to do it myself. There is no way that would give me something. Maybe it will take 10 or 20 years until that happens. And uh, for me, that was a choice to build my own business in that way to build the experience and to build everything I need for, uh, like that. So I, um, after I quitted that job, I was floundering for about one year, trying to make things happen. And uh, um, it was pretty frustrating time because um, I was not realizing what I was doing. I was just trying things out, and then uh, after a year, I was uh, I was not uh, making uh, enough money. It was just a little project here, a little project there, but nothing really was uh, uh, like stable tangible in terms yeah. of uh, money. Yeah. yeah, so I decided that I have to get a job. Like uh, it's going nowhere, and uh, I found uh, by accident uh, one program. And that uh, program w uh, was called Focus at Work. It was uh, funded by government and was designed specifically for women and uh, immigrants uh, and uh, Canadians, anyone but uh, women who are unemployed. But mostly at that program, there were women who are immigrants because they uh, had mostly problems uh, finding good jobs. And that program has changed a lot for me because... Um, I realized how much is available and through that program I found out that there are tons of organizations and tons of resources for women specifically, for entrepreneurs, uh, for immigrants uh, and the whole new world opened up for me. Yeah, so that, uh, that company is Focus, right? Uh, that company is called uh, YWCA, Vancouver. Okay. Why did I think and, Focus? Uh, <laughs> and the pro the program that's, uh, that I took uh, called Focus at Work. Okay, Focus at Work, right. Yeah, so the program called that way, but uh, the organization that uh, created that program and ran that program was, uh, is called uh, YWCA. Mm -hmm. And they actually uh, focus on helping women specifically on, in different, different issues. And not only immigrants, but um, a any woman who needs help. Right. And so... I yeah, so you, you started uh, attending their program Focus at Work, and that's how you found out about all other or, uh, other organizations, right? Yeah, because there I met uh, women who were in the same situation as me, and uh, we had uh, two facilitators, um, uh, career advisors, uh, who taught us everything about uh, Canadian workplaces, about uh, networking, about uh, how to build uh, the right resume for 
Canadian employers, uh, how to write cover letters that would speak to Canadian employers, and uh, that was everything that's uh, related to finding a good job in Canada, specifically in Vancouver. Mm-hmm. And and there I met uh, a lot of women who really helped me um, stand strong for who I am. They saw value in me. They recognized my skills, my strengths, my experiences. And that was uh, a big shift for me. And another thing that these women were Canadian women. And I really appreciated that uh, Canadian women saw value in me. And they were telling me, like, there is no way you should uh, think of yourself as an immigrant. Uh, you were just a person with, uh, with skills and experiences, and it doesn't matter where you're from. What matters is what you can do. That's, that's very important to hear something like that. Yeah, yeah. And from then on, you started working more in your business? Yeah, I was. Uh, I uh, took that program, and for about uh, two, three months, I was looking for a job because uh, I I had to find something at that time. But I was not getting any luck <laughs> because, uh, like logically, I needed to get a job. But in my heart, I wanted to build a business. And um, while I was looking uh, for a job during that time, I took. Um, evening classes on um, on how to build uh, small business uh, that course covered everything uh, all the aspects of building a business uh, in Vancouver and in Canada in terms of like um, legal issues in terms of marketing uh, um, accounting and all these little aspects and through that program we had to uh, write uh, a solid business plan mm-hmm. So while looking for a job during the day, I uh, uh, that um, during evenings uh, at that time I was uh, working on my business plan, mm-hmm. and then after I finished uh, that program, uh, I found um, accidentally another program that was uh, funded by government, and uh, it was uh, created uh, specifically for uh, unemployed youth. Uh, under age um, of 32, and people who had a business idea. So when I saw that program, I thought, like, I'm still looking for a job. Um, My heart is about building a business. This is what I really want. So I should just take this program. I applied, and they accepted me. And through that program, I solidified my business plan. And um, within, I think, after two, three months of taking that uh, program, I finished my business plan and next year in January, I launched, uh, official, I officially launched my business. And since that time, uh, I'm pretty stable with uh, my business. So that was uh, how long ago? Um, so I launched uh, my business um, in 2012 in January. So it's about uh, two years ago. Yeah, okay. Yeah, continuing that, that's a very interesting experience. You know, I've never talked to somebody um, in details about, you know, Canadian experience. So um, thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, and because you know so much about uh, mindset, could you please recommend or give some ideas for uh, women who immigrate somewhere to have this mindset that will help them uh, with their experience? Um, First of all is not to think of yourself as an immigrant. Because the word immigrant has kind of the meaning like your second second class citizen. And it's, it doesn't give you a good feeling when you start comparing yourself with uh, other citizens in that country. So I would recommend stop thinking of yourself as an immigrant and start thinking of yourself as a person who was born in this country and now lives in that country. And that's it. And there is no difference between you and other people, let's say, between me and Canadians who've been uh, living here, who have uh, Canadian education um, and speak English without accent. Mm -hmm. No difference at all. 
And the second thing would be valuing yourself, valuing all the experiences that uh, we have in our lives and uh, valuing our education, our skill set, and focusing on strengths rather than looking for weaknesses or what's, uh, how we are different from the people that uh, surround us in a new country. And the third thing is that uh, what I would give is um, like I meet a lot of people from other countries and uh, usually how they describe the experience uh, in Canada is that everything is hard. Like find a job is hard, uh, find a place to stay is hard, um, keeping up with your family if they uh, immigrate together with the family is hard or anything that's related to Canada they would call it hard. And uh, I find that this is pretty negative um, thinking because uh, it just... Uh, creates more troubles in your life and it makes uh, things harder for you. So what I would recommend, and uh, that's what I usually now tell all uh, people that I meet, is that stop saying that, stop focusing on that, and start thinking how can it all be easier and how you can make it. I love that. And uh, that. yeah, just uh, look for opportunities, make opportunities, and just keep asking yourself every day, how can I, how can I do this, how can I do that, and how can it be easier? Because it doesn't have to be hard. And uh, there are lots of uh, people who can help. And uh, right now there are so many organizations that uh, have, op uh, have their doors open and uh, people uh, are willing to help. And I think in some countries like Canada, it might be even easier to start a business, right? So uh, yeah. how long does it take to... Uh, you know, establish a business, a small business, in terms of applying for the papers and um, everything like that? Well, in terms of, like, um, it depends on, on uh, the type of business. If it's um, the business that's where you have to, um, let's say, retail. Yeah. You have to... Um, you have to find a place, you have to apply for lots of documents to, um, to rent that place, you have to, uh, let's say, create a store. That would require a lot, a lot, a lot of efforts because it's not an easy process here in Canada. There are lots of um, legal issues that's uh, related to that. But if, let's say, if you start a business that would, uh, wouldn't require a physical location, but uh, somewhere when you can uh, use your skills, let's say there are lots of consultants here, mm -hmm. and um, all they need is a laptop, their hands, their brain, and that's it. And they can uh, go meet with clients at a coffee shop or their offices, and uh, it doesn't uh, require... Um, to have a physical office. A physical office, yeah. So it depends on kind of business uh, that you have and uh, that you want to develop. Another thing is that here in Canada, government um, encourages people to start businesses. And uh, they right now create different programs, especially for youth and immigrants, um, to become an entrepreneur. Because they realize that entrepreneurs are uh, the ones who drive economy and they want to encourage that in, uh, in Canada. Yeah, well, I heard that. Um, um, there are, like, I don't know the percentage exactly, well, but um, most of the population in Canada are immigrants or are uh, first generation immigrants uh, who are born from, uh, yeah, from immigrants. And, um, yeah, that's the way to go, to encourage businesses and uh, yeah. grow the economy that way. And I think that's um, like building your own business. I think that's, um, that's the better way to build your career in Canada if you are an immigrant. Because uh, you can make lots of things happen that otherwise you wouldn't uh, given uh, these opportunities at a workplace. Because you have to prove yourself. Okay, let's talk but, about this. <laughs> yeah, let's say, uh, um, like I had this job for a year and a half. And they didn't value what I had to offer. And I just had to do whatever they gave me. And I couldn't find any other opportunities within that company. Mm -hmm. But now that's... Um, 
I have my own business. I have a freedom to choose what am I doing, what I'm not doing. And I have a freedom to offer whatever I want um, for my clients. And uh, I find this is an amazing, amazing, amazing way to build your career, especially if you're a woman, because uh, if you have children, it will give you a lot of flexibility too. And you don't have to, uh, again, rely on your employer uh, to give you opportunities and uh, to give you the projects uh, to work on. Where do your clients come from usually? Uh, are they Canadian? Are they Russian? Are they from somewhere else? Yeah, they're actually not Russians <laughs> because uh, when I um, when I started my business, I had actually when I came to Canada, I had um, an intention to focus on English and to focus on building my network among Canadians because uh, I knew that in order for me to to improve English. And to assimilate myself in a new country, I have to surround myself with people who are from here. So I, uh, within that six years, I have some uh, Russian friends, but uh, not many. And most of um, the people that I know, they're, they're from here. Mm -hmm. So in, I don't have Russian clients. And uh, it's uh, some people who, um, who are immigrants like me, but they're from other countries. And uh, English is, uh, is the language that I work uh, in my business, yeah. Katerina, thank you so much for uh, spending time with me today and for sharing your valuable experience with us. Um, I really appreciate you coming to my show. Oh, you're welcome, Karina. It's, uh, it's a pleasure for me to share these experiences because I know how valuable um, uh, for people like me here, other stories, and that's what I always appreciate uh, um, in all the people that I meet, uh, because uh, I want to hear their stories and I want to learn from them, and that usually inspires me to see to know how other people are doing uh, and accomplishing things, no matter what happens in their lives. <laughs> Thank you.